This is David Spears, civil engineering instructor at Texas Tech University, talking about static CE2301. Got a centroid by composite areas example to do today. Got this uh, weird five sided uh, shape as shown there. And we've got the dimensions, and it kind of Part of it's in all four of the quadrants of the XY coordinate system. Of course, this is Y and this is X. And we've got the thing dimensioned. And we want to determine the area and X bar and Y bar, which of course are the dimensions to the centroid or the center of gravity, CG, which I've kind of eyeballed and put in there to begin with. Now, what we're trying to do is, uh, with these shapes, we're trying to divide them up into typically things like rectangles and triangles and sometimes circles and half circles and find the centroids of the, and the areas of the individual pieces and add them up and then compute the centroid of, and the area of the overall shape. So the way that I'm going to do this today is I'm basically going to, I always want to try to divide it up into the fewest number of pieces. And I'm going to, I see several ways that I can, or at least two, that I can divide it up into two parts, or three parts. And so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to say I have a big square. And I'm going to kind of dash it in. A big square that's going to be 8 by 9. So I'm going to say this is the outline of the part that I'm going to call 1, area 1. And it's just a big, it's not a square, it's a rectangle. So that thing is going to be area 1. And it's centroid. It's, uh, it straddles in the x direction, the y axis. And it's a little bit below the x-axis, so it's centroid something like right there. I'll draw a little blue x. That's not right. It's down from there. And so it's really like something like right here. If I can erase that without erasing my axis. Pretty much. Then I'm going to divide it into... I'm going to subtract out from there two negative triangles. And I'm going to call this one here in the upper left-hand corner, this triangle that I'm going to outline in red. Area 2. It's centroids one-third from the big end on each direction, something like there maybe. And then in the lower right hand corner I've got a, another negative triangle that I'm going to call area 3. This triangle, I'm going to cut it out of the big rectangle, area 1. Call that area 3. Its centroid is once again one third the base and the height. Be somewhere like there. Just eyeballing it. Now I've kind of got my area all divided up. Let's see, uh, what are the dimensions of these things? Back on this triangle three. Okay, it's over here on the left, it's a six down from the x axis, and this is three is this top point. So that makes this height 3. The overall width of the whole rectangle and this triangle are 4 plus 1 plus 3, or 8. And then go back and do that red triangle in the area 2. It is 4 plus 1, or 5, in the horizontal. And 2 plus 3 in the vertical are also 5. So the overall um, height of this, the blue rectangle is 4 plus 2 plus 3, or 9, and 
and I've got everything dimensioned. Okay, so what we're going on is the um, the concept that we'll do here in a minute. I need the areas, so I'm going to do, I'm going to do this in a table. So the thing I need are the areas of each part. I need x tilde for each part, y tilde, x tilde a, where I multiply two of those columns together, and y tilde a. Then I show my areas, the three areas that I've divided the shape up into, here. I'm going to call this one, put it on that row, make a little rectangle out here to remind myself. Then I've got that negative triangle area two, shaped like that, color it in to indicate that it's negative. Three, the green triangle, which is oriented and shaped like that, it's a negative. I might even go in here and put a negative in there, in that box, in those boxes to indicate that they are negative areas and they're cut out. Now, I said that there was different ways to look at this thing, so the other two ways that are kind of obvious to me are it takes four areas, but I could divide it into, I could, over here in the lower left hand, I could divide it into a positive tri if it's all po if I wanted all positive areas I could say that triangle and I could make this a positive triangle that blue one then I could have a little narrow thin strip like that and I could have a another rectangle right here that would be four areas, and that would be a few more calculations. I don't really like that very much. I could also divide it into um, a smaller green positive rectangle, like this. And then I could subtract out that same red triangle. And this time I would have a positive blue triangle right here. This would be three shapes and it'd be the same number of calculations so there's probably I'm sure there are several other ways to do it and that's just the way this is the way I'm going to do it this one so let's fill in the blanks what I'm really trying to do is just locate or for, just first let's compute the areas of these uh, three sections or three uh, composite areas so the area of that blue rectangle is 9 by 8 I like to do my calculations in the box so I can have them to look at again. Should have given you all the units here. These are all meters, so all these areas are meters squared. The unit, the, the lengths or dimensions are meters. Then when I multiply meters times meters squared, I get meters cubed for those two things, y tilde a and x tilde a. Okay, now I'm ready to do the math uh, for the area of the red triangle. It is a triangle, so its area is one half base times height, and it's five by five. So half of 25 is negative 12.5. This green triangle is a triangle, so it's one half. Base times height is 8 times 3. It's 24 divided by 2 is negative 12. So this bottom row is a summation row. And I just add up all the numbers in that column and I get 47.5. And that's going to be meters cubed. I mean meters squared. The next tilde for the blue rectangle, well it's four and four on each side of the uh, y-axis therefore its x tilde is zero its y tilde is I want to figure everything from this top corner up here well it's nine meters tall so half of that the half of the height of a rectangle that's the center 
is 4.5. So I'm going to start up here at 3, x at y equals 3, and go down 4.5 from there. So I would write that dimension here as 3 minus 9 divided by 2. And that's 3 minus 4.5, or negative 1.5. Then for the red triangle area 2, the negative area, both of its dimensions are going to be, or its x is going to be negative, because once again I'm going to start over here in this corner, and I'm going to say, I'll do it in red, this point from the corner at the big side is one-third of its width. So this is five times one-third. But I'm starting at a point of negative four. So this x value is going to be negative four plus five-thirds. Remember, I'm just trying to get the Cartesian coordinates of the centroid of these parts. Negative four plus five-thirds is negative 2.33. For y bar, it's very similar. I'm coming down one third of its height, which is also 5 times one third. And I'm starting off this time at a y value of 3. So I'm starting off at 3 minus 5 thirds. So that's one positive 1.33. Then for the green triangle, I like to dimension them first, and I should have done that. In the x direction, from that the corner at the big side, or the big corner, I'm one-third of its width, or 8 times one-third. But I'm starting off at a value of x equals 4. So this is going to be 4 minus eight-thirds. So that equals 1.33 positive. I'm always looking back and seeing if that number makes sense. Yes, it's positive. And then I've got y tilde, which is from this big corner, it's one-third of the height, which is one-third of three. So that's just one. I'm starting off at in the y direction. This whole thing is negative five. I'm sorry. Um, I'm really at negative six plus three thirds or one. So this is going to be negative five. So, now I just do the math. I don't need a summation of these x tilde and y tilde columns. I just need to add up or do the math and then sum up those columns individually. So what I've got is x, 72 times 0 is 0. 72 times negative 1.5 is negative 108. Um, Negative 12.5 times negative 2.3, I'm on, on row 2 now, is positive 29.16. The 6 is repeating. Then for y tilde a, for area 2, is negative 12.5 times 1.33, or negative 16.66. Repeating. Then I have, for area 3, which is a negative area, I have 12 times 1.3, negative 12 times 1.333 is negative 4. I mean, excuse me, negative 16. And then negative 12 times negative 5 for y tilde is going to be positive 60. Now I just add the columns. x tilde a, the sum of that is 13.16. 6 repeating, and then this one's going to be negative 64.66. 
once I've got those values, I'm home free because I can just figure x bar as the sum of the x tilde a's divided by the sum of the a's, the areas, and that is equal to positive, it's a 13.16 divided by 47.5 that's equal to 0 0.277 in, uh, meters. I'll plot that here in a second, make sure it makes sense with the way I kind of eyeballed it. Then I've got y bar a. y bar is equal to the sum of the y tilde a's divided by the sum of the areas. And I've got negative 64 Point sixty six divided by forty seven point five. Check my work and I come up with one point three six meters negative one point three six meters. So those are the two answers. I always want to filter these through my common sense. So kind of plot these values. I've got in the x direction positive 0 0.277. In the y direction I have negative 1.36. Something like right about there. 